Ghana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does the embassy do? What does the embassy? What does it do? What does it do? What does it do? To cut it short, an embassy is not a police station. <laughs> and it is not a court. But you come here, you bring your problems, and we make judgment on the other company. And because we are not police, we don't go to arrest them. Because we are not under no mandate to go and arrest the company which is harassing you. But we use the laws. An embassy operates on two laws. The law of the country where which sent you like here, the laws of Uganda and the laws of the host country. So all our services that we offer to you must be within the laws of the two countries. So anything outside the law of country, the embassy will not offer. Because the embassy will also be breaking the law, which is not right. And that's why the deputy was saying you must be law-abiding residents. Because we are supposed, including myself, he said he's a deputy, he's a diplomat, I'm a diplomat, they may not arrest me, but I cannot break a law because that they will not arrest me. No, I'm supposed to be an example. So I'll just list for you some of the services that the embassy is offering. There are some people who are very new, they even don't know now if I have what. What does the embassy here anyway do? Some people even have no idea totally. One of the first services we I think I hope you are all very aware that you are supposed to have new passports that of East African type. Someone asked the question, can we have here passports being processed here? Right now, government is implementing that program of expanding the production, different missions, but it is in a phase demand. The piloted, I think now, UK, London, Abu Dhabi, Washington, they have now implemented the machines to print the passports. Eventually, Doha may be on the program, but we cannot guarantee when. But now, how are we, what are we doing now to help those who are already here? Those who want to renew is not only renewing, but also replacing. In the event that your passport gets lost when you are here, you can still replace it. You don't need to go back to Uganda. You can through the embassy request for replacing your passport. That is if it is lost. Now, what we offer now are simply letters confirming that you are arrested here. And that recommendation letter facilitates you to send wherever it is going to be able to process your passport. If you, if you send it to your relative or friend or whoever in, in Uganda, that we are in Qatar, Minister of Internal Affairs will issue you a new passport. And now you no longer need to write, previously you were writing a letter as expressing your interest. Now we have a form which is in. You just walk in with your other documents, they give you a form, you fill in the form, then we will process for you the letter. What do we need? A copy of your biodata page, in the first page of your passport. A copy of your national ID, if you have. If you are in the diaspora, it is not a requirement that it is not mandatory that you must have a what? A national ID now. But if you have it, is is good you attach it. Why do we always insist that if you have it attached, it, it helps us to resolve the issues, a lot of problems. We encourage you to be as vigilant and be abiding because we don't want you to go by this way here of the world. We want you to be here. Those of you who have been here many years, I'm sure, if you ask them properly, you have just come, they will tell you they have been here because they have managed to keep the laws of this country. Otherwise, there was no way they would be here. It's only by them keeping the laws of the country, knowing how to manage the laws, how to manage the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all. Those who don't know me, my name is Aliguma Saurayan. I'm the chairperson for the Gun Committee in Qatar, Yukakok. And uh, this is something that we used to pray for. 
and yearning for many years. And as our plan as the community, we wanted to be a bridge whereby as a community, we bring the members or the Ugandans close to the embassy. Because once there is that gap, that is where all these issues comes from. Once there is a distance between these two parties, misunderstandings arises. So as a community, we were waiting for that particular time to say that how can we be a bridge? And once we become a bridge, or when we will be able to be a bridge, then Ugandans will no longer have an excuse, will no longer rise things that we hear on social media or where we stay about the embassy. Because now you are here. Now Ugandans are in the embassy. So it is my prayer that what, whichever case that you have, whichever inquiry, whichever proposal that you have, and you want to address it to the embassy, you don't need to see me. You don't need to come to the community. You can as well come to the embassy because the embassy has opened the door for you. So this is a good thing. Secondly, sometimes I won't say that the embassy doesn't know. The embassy knows each and everything that goes around. But you should also be responsible citizens and understand that also the embassy have got different agendas. As a government body, they have programs as much as they have with the people or the Ugandans. So this is the time that they have opened the door for you to bring in all ideas, all proposals, and all the cries. Stop crying outside. Come and cry from here. And if it fails here, like they say, that if it is within the law, they won't fail. We have been missing this. To have someone who can go out there and fight for common Uganda. Have you come to the top of 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 the top